Welcome back. We're continuing our conversation on a highly debated minimum wage hike. 15 bucks an hour by 2025. That's what's on the table in Springfield right now. Yesterday, State Senator Jason Barrickman shared why he's opposed. And today we're joined on the phone with Frank Manzo from the Illinois Economic Policy Institute, who thinks it would be good for the state. Frank, your organization looks at policy and its impact, and you released a study on that minimum wage increase. How do you see it impacting Illinois? earnings while having little to no negative impact on jobs or hours. A $15 minimum wage would increase paychecks for low-income workers and have the largest impact on communities outside of the Chicago region. So when you talk about large impact outside of Chicago, like Peoria area, obviously in places that are not Chicago, what would that impact be? How would it be different specifically? Yeah, so there are uh, 1.4 million workers across the state of Illinois, adult workers, who would be directly impacted by an increase in the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Uh, that is, they currently earn less than $15 an hour and are paid by the hour. Uh, many of those workers, the vast majority of them actually are, are located outside of the Chicago area. And so by raising the minimum wage from, you know, from the current rate of 8.25 to 15 dollars an hour, the, their wages, those individuals would be uh, increased, and so the total earnings gain expected in uh, an area like Peoria is between 7,000 and 8,000 dollars per year in new income for low-income workers that can, you know, is then turned around and spent back in the local economy. There was an Associated Press study that argued the increase would not be as large when you factor projected inflation. There's a lot of people who argue differently uh, with that for obvious reasons. Does your study take inflation into consideration? Yeah, Eugene, this is a great point, and actually I think it brings up two points. The first is that according to the Low Income Housing uh, Coalition, the National Low Income Housing Coalition, the hourly wage needed for a full-time worker in Peoria County to be able to afford a modest two-bedroom apartment is currently, today, $14.96, which is, you round that up, that's $15 an hour, and you currently need $15 an hour in order to afford a modest two-bedroom apartment at fair market rent in the Peoria area. That's the cost of living story, and that's already about $15 an hour and will only go up over the next few years. Um, but the, the side part, the, the next part of that is the, is the impact on prices, because so that's inflation and price growth. How much did, uh, do prices go up following a minimum wage hike? And what the research finds is that the impact on consumer prices is actually very small. So a, an increase in the minimum wage has been found to have a small impact on restaurant food prices and, and increase those prices. But, however, when you look at a place like Seattle, which has recently raised its minimum wage to 15 and it's actually now $16 an hour, uh, there's been no evidence of a change in supermarket food prices, both you know, one month and one year following the enactment of the, the local ordinance. So the, price, the, uh, the impact on prices and on inflation uh, is small at, and, and at best. Now, obviously, there's a lot of people, business owners, who are, are going to disagree with you on that as far as particularly grocery stores and the impacts that they will have there. Uh, I want to ask you, obviously you are for this. Do you foresee any negative effects from this change in minimum wage? There's so many people that say there will be negative impacts. The possible negative consequences that had been brought up prior to the city of Chicago raising its minimum wage to now $12 an hour and eventually $13 an hour have not panned out. Uh, the sky has not fallen, em employment has not gone down. In fact, the unemployment rate is lower in Chicago and in Cook County than it is across the rest of the state. Uh, and in fact, that policy has already produced higher incomes for at least 330,000 low-wage workers while having no negative impact on the growth of new businesses or overall employment. So the, but the answer to your question is there, there may be a small initial drop in, in employment or hours from employers who just feel that they cannot pay a $15 minimum wage to their low-wage employees. Uh, but that's going to be offset and has across the country been offset by the higher earnings for low-income individuals who directly benefit from the policy. Those, those are workers who 
you know, spend that money back in the economy on, on food, on, on their housing, and on the gas, and not, and they don't, you know, they barely, they, they have a paycheck to paycheck, and they can't save a penny. So they're spending that money right back in the economy. And that increase in consumer demand offsets the, the possible negative impact. And that's what we've seen here in Illinois, locally in the Chicago area, but then also across the country. All right, my last question to you. On my show yesterday, Senator Jason Berryman argued it would be better if lawmakers considered a wage increase based on region. Has your study looked at that possibility of what a regional increase would impact? There has been some discussion about the regionalization of the minimum wage in the halls of the General Assembly, but I do not believe that that idea is going to be passed. And the reason is that the minimum wage is intended to ensure that working class individuals can sustain families and cover living expenses. And right now, today, the, minimum, the wage needed in order to afford a two bedroom apartment in the post Peoria area is already $15 an hour. And that's right now, not when the minimum wage of $15 an hour will be fully in effect in six years. Uh, across other parts of rural Illinois, the wage needed to, for a full-time worker to afford a two-bedroom apartment uh, is about $13.50. Now, in six years, adjusted for inflation, projected inflation, that's going to be above $15 an hour. So all signs point to $15 an hour. Uh, and the, you know, the, you can you kind of argue over whether the that's the right standard is, is should a minimum wage worker working full-time be able to afford a two-bedroom apartment but that's a kind of a tough sell in a state where we have you know one billionaire in the city of chicago owns a 58 million dollar apartment and home so uh, it's a little bit of a tough sell to say you know you don't deserve uh, a two-bedroom uh, modest two-bedroom apartment in peoria and again all signs right now today already point to a 15 dollar uh, an hour wage needed to to afford that and, and cover your living expenses and sustain a family. All right. Well, Frank, thanks for showing, sharing your position there for our viewers. If you have thoughts on this, we'll post that on our Facebook page as we always do later today. Share what you think. Coming up, a promise.